Hello friends, welcome to our channel Creating Essence. I am Megan, thank you so much for stopping by today. It's the first week of September, so you know what day it is? The September Homestead Update. I'm gonna take you around and show you what has been growing and changing on our one and a quarter suburban acre homestead over this past month. First stop, chickens. Hi girls. Hi. These are our 20 black sex link hens. They're doing very well, they're very happy. This one wants to get out because clearly the grass is greener outside. We're getting a slowdown in our egg production, so I'm pretty sure that molt is coming. We've gone from about 18 to 20 a day to about 10 to 12 a day, which is fine. It's still more than enough for us and for the people we regularly sell to. In case you couldn't tell, Hurricane Dorian is uh, blowing through today. We aren't getting much from him, just outer bands that are occasionally giving us. We've got sustained winds around, the um, meteorologist said between 25 and 35 miles an hour with gusts between 50 and 65. So it's not bad, we get some bouts of rain, but in general it's just a nice cool breezy day that kids are really enjoying from the 95 it was two days ago. Next up is the apiary. The girls are doing well. We've got a little bit of activity out this morning, but it's cooler and breezier, so everybody's pretty much inside. Hello, friend. On both hives. I showed in my last beekeeping videos that we were starting to get some small hive beetles, so I've got some traps going on those. Small hive beetles are a nuisance, but unfortunately normal. We have our trail cam that we check every day, and for the past several weeks, we've been seeing a lot of activity back here, especially between about midnight and 4 a.m. In particular, there's a mama with two baby deer that just come through the neighbors. They don't spend much time on our property because of that guy. Hey, cutie. Hi. Oh, okay. So the earth garden, it's definitely in a stage of dying back, but there are still some things that are putting on good fruit that we've left. Our purple tomatillos are starting to really ripen. We've got good firm fruit filling out the husks on all of these. We're excited because we've never grown tomatillos before. We have tomatoes, some very sad tomatoes. We've been pulling them out one by one. You can see these are very sad, diseased ones, but they are still putting on some fruit. So we're just kind of letting them finish out. And then we're gonna clean out all the tomatoes in here and plant more fall garden goods. Still have lots of zidia. And we actually have new buds like this coming on all over the plants. And calendula. I've never had calendula go for a second round like this before. But as you can see, these old hard ones, we harvested flowers and the seeds off of them, gosh, a couple months ago. And now we have all this new growth coming down here and giving us more flowers. It's awesome. We have so many peppers of all kinds, more basil, lots of big marigold bushes, and more zinnia over here. These ones are just beautiful. We've never grown serrano peppers before, but this year we had these three plants and they have just been amazingly fruitful. Three was definitely more than we needed. Maybe next year we'll plant two, and if they both do well, we'll give away one of them. These sweet banana peppers have been really great in our garden this year as well. They look like a Hungarian wax pepper, but they're actually not spicy at all. They are a very sweet, bell pepper type of flavor with a nice thin flesh. So the kids really like them because a lot of times they find 
big, stronger flavored bell peppers to be a bit off-putting. This is our super special Calabrian chili plant. It's really funny to me that we planted this seed and it started as seems normal back in January and it's September and it's just starting to put on fruit. It is a special Italian chili pepper called a Calabrian chili that we ordered from Italy. So I'm not sure if that's typical, but I'm sad that it's starting to show some signs of fall because it hasn't quite fruited yet. These are gonna turn red and it is just covered in fruit down in here. I'm really hoping that the fall weather doesn't take out the plant before it can produce fruit. Over here we have four hills of squash, two of zucchini, and two of summer squash getting going on the fall garden. We have terrible squash bugs here in Virginia and we found that if you grow zucchini in the fall garden instead it's less of a problem. So that's what we're doing this year. I'll have cherry tomatoes doing well and purple basil doing really well over here. And some of these plants that look so, so diseased and miserable have really nice young growth coming off of it with blossoms that's producing good fruit. So that's really the only reason that we haven't gotten rid of all of these tomato plants already. Over here we have basically the brassicas. We have pak choy here, broccoli, more pak choy, and then we have a whole bunch of red cabbage. I didn't get my seedlings going in time. So these are from the local nursery and they have done really well. Put them in the ground with lots of compost. See how they come out. Over here we have a couple rows of greens. This one here is Swiss chard and kale. We've got teeny bits of rainbow shard coming up. And up here we have teeny bits of kale starting to come up. And in this row, going down, we have five kinds of lettuces. And they are starting to come up in here. You can see them down in there. Doing really well all the way down the row. I, I ordered more seeds for kale and some different greens, like mustard greens and spinach and lettuces from Seeds of Change. They should be here any day now. And when they arrive, I think we'll start more judiciously taking out these tomato plants and making space for more rows to put in greens. The calendar says our first frost comes in the beginning of in the first week of November, but in reality, it doesn't actually hit until typically the second or third week, sometimes even the fourth of November. So we've got lots of time for lots of things to grow still. The peach tree has grown tremendously this year, as have the elderberries. You can tell they're starting to yellow and lose their leaves. The garlic chives have done so well this year. It's so tasty. The apples, you know, this is the third year that the apples have done so poorly. And I know, we now know, these are all cedars that infect them with cedar rust. And I don't know if we'll ever be able to conquer it because I did not know that those are cedar trees lining our neighbor's yard when I put in my orchard bed here. So we'll see. We might be taking them out to put in more elderberry. Speaking of which, we have this elderberry that I accidentally pulled up a small stick when I was weeding around that one this winter. So I put it in a pot and then just put the little stick in the ground here this spring and it has grown so well. In about June, we put in some birdhouse gourds here and it took off 
and decided to grow through the garden fence and is growing, if nothing else, a really pretty vine on the garden fence here and some gorgeous birdhouse gourds. In my July update, I had said one of my goals was to tend to the blueberries and get this area much less neglected. And I definitely reached that goal, though, as you can see, it's still not perfect. My herbs like sage in here and my new blueberries are still doing really well. I've got some marjoram going to seed here, but the grasses are starting to jump in from the sides and I really need to get this weeded. Really, really. Strawberries, still no better. So, yeah. Our beets are doing well. We've harvested most of the good sized ones and we actually just replanted them. We found that our root vegetables do best in the raised back to Eden beds and we just scatter sow and then really drench with water and water them in. <clears throat> they sink down into the wood chips and sprout up really nicely. Down in this end, we sprinkled a packet of parsnips. We've never planted parsnips before, so I'm kind of excited to see how they grow. Over here we have the original birdhouse gourds and they have pretty much, they've pretty much taken over and demolished the trellis here. We've got a few good sized ones in here that'll be ready to harvest soon. This one. But we're also still getting blossoms for new ones over here. So we'll see if it actually has time to grow. Over here, we have planted a few things. We have kohlrabi seeded over here. We have a couple cucumber here because we know we can help it climb the trellis there. And on that side, we have spinach and some Ford hook shard. And across here, we have our carrot bed. We also, just like with the beets there, we've harvested all of the good sized ones thus far and then reseeded it. So this will be filling in with more carrot tops. The peppermint that we put in here at the end of the raspberry bed is doing very well. I was able to dehydrate a bunch for tea for the winter and now it's gone to seed and I am very happy about that. I know people call peppermint super invasive and you should only have it in a pot, but I don't mind it being sort of a ground cover here in the raspberry bed. These trellises that I kind of conjured up in my head and we made have really worked well. We just have a wire here. There's a hole board in the end of each one on each level and they're just meant to be a gentle trellis to hold up raspberry canes when they get tall enough. As you can see with this one, it grows and reaches in that direction too. And as you can see, this is another area that uh, needs some weeding attention. We had a little bit of trouble with the trellises on this side. This post started splintering really badly and falling apart. And we thought perhaps it was just a problem with the post. So when we got one of these wooden posts that we use for our garden fence and put it in here to support it, this started splintering too and would not go down really any further than the hole was dug and that was pounded in. So I think we may have some rock down in there on this side of the driveway that we did not realize was here. Bee Island, same story, different day. We do have some cotton that finally sprouted here and has given us some really neat bulls. It's not nearly as tall. I mean, this is maybe eight inches tall and the cotton we grew last year grew a solid three to four feet tall. I know that this is just wood chips. It doesn't have the high density of nutrients like classic Back to Eden. So I completely 
take the blame for the lack of success with most things in this bed. My bulbs on the end here, we put in with a lot of compost directly in the spot where we put the bulbs. So that really just confirms my notion that it just needs more decomposition and more food in there. So I need to get this weeded out, get it a good layer of compost and another layer of wood chips so it can all break down over the winter and be a really fertile growing place in the spring. So hopefully the year of 2020 is the year we actually get to grow our medicinal herb garden here in Bee Island. And that is it my friends. That is the update on what's going on and growing here over the last month. So we've had a lot of messages asking us if we were in danger from Dorian. We're not, we're definitely not. We are a-okay. Just getting a really breezy day. We're supposed to get more rain later today, which will be very nice for all the growing spaces. We are safe and sound. I hope that you and yours are also safe and sound from Hurricane Dorian and the earthquakes that have been happening in Southern California. Thank you all for sticking around today with us, friends. If you are planting a fall garden, what you're putting in and how things are growing. If you're in a more northern climate, how is your summer garden still going? How is harvesting and preserving going? Tell me all about it. I really do want to know. Thank you so much for sticking around with us. If you like this video, as always, give us a thumbs up. Subscribe if you'd like to hang out for more, and we'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.